and let's start on the hip drop tackle because that's the big safety rule of the day. And it has been confusing this week because the NFL clearly wants this out. The commissioner has said it. Troy Vincent has said it. I, I've heard nothing to suggest there won't be 24 votes. And the hip drop is, is very simple. You know it when you see it, Miles. Defensive player, typically coming in from behind or in an angle, grabs the ball carrier, twists, and just falls down. You just fall down. That's the way to get the guy on the ground. You just fall down, and he goes with you. He's not strong enough to carry you. He doesn't Mark Bavaro you into the end zone. No one is strong enough. When you take that 250-pound linebacker and just fall down, the ball carrier is going too. The problem is the defensive player lands on the lower leg of the ball carrier, resulting in ankle sprain and or broken ankle, serious injury, missed time, or if there isn't extensive missed time, the player just isn't the same. There's Tyree Kill on that Monday night getting both horse collared and hip dropped. I don't think they threw the flag there. There was a little, there was a horse collar involvement, but the hip drop mm-hmm. legal, that's going to be out. And, you know, the unions against it, that was the development from yesterday. They had a conference call and Troy Vincent was asked about the league's reaction to the union's resistance. And he made a pretty good point. They always resist. They resist everything. I don't know why, but they always resist these safety-related rule changes. And I think the NFL just views it as background noise at this point. They don't care. The NFL understands the enhanced injury risk. I think we all do. I think anybody that just said, because I remember when I first thought about it, it's like, what's that? And then it's like, oh, that's what it is? Oh, oh, God, yeah, they got to get rid of that. And I think anybody that takes the time to understand what it really is and understand what it's done to the game, what it's doing to the offensive skill position players, it's a no-brainer. It needs to go. Well, it, I mean, we just you just brought up the horse collar, right? That's with Tyreek Hill. And I don't necessarily remember the, it, whether there was much debate around that play, but I do remember when Terrell Owens got tackled by a horse collar, right, in the early 2000s, and then he broke his leg. Like That's kind of what made that play get highlighted as being so dangerous. So the fact that they took that out of the game you know, or they've legislated it out of the game. And of course, occasionally it still happens and it's a 15 yard penalty. I mean, it shows that things can, things can be legislated for safety, you know, especially if it is something like that, that poses a huge injury risk. And I understand why defenders especially would be opposed to something like this, but it is an issue of safety. And I think when we look at it and we see it, on game day, if it's a one o'clock game, four twenty-five game, or an eight o'clock primetime game, we can all recognize that this is a dangerous play for anybody that's about to get tackled. You know, when whenever I see a hip drop tackle, I start you know grimacing because I'm like, oh man, I hope it's not a sprained ankle. I hope it's not an ankle fracture like we saw um, with Mark Andrews. Like th- this is a serious injury risk. So I get it from that standpoint. Um, But I also understand why there is resistance to it. I mean, but if you look at it, man, especially against those QBs, you, you just, you don't want to see it because that can get them hurt. And the last thing that the league wants is more injured quarterbacks. So yeah, from that standpoint, it, it makes a lot of sense to me. And I really am confused by the union's resistance to this because First of all, how do we know that the players collectively are against it? Defensive players don't want the rule to be changed because they'll say it's already hard enough to play defense. You're taking away one of our techniques for getting a guy onto the ground, and injuries happen. It's football. But if you're an offensive player, specifically if you're a running back, a receiver, a tight end, or a quarterback with a propensity to take off and run with the ball, you want this rule to be changed. This highlights the fact that, that there really shouldn't be one player's union. There should be a bargaining unit for every position because there are different rights, responsibilities, and interests that come into play. We've talked about in the past with running backs. They need to have their own bargaining unit because they get screwed by the fact that the quarterbacks get all the money. Well, quarterbacks, running backs, receivers, tight ends, if they had their own little groups, they'd be saying get rid of the hip drop tackle because it creates – 
an undue risk of injury for us. And I look at the union collectively and I just say, how do you not balance it out? Well, you know, guys are going to get fined and they're going to get penalized. Yeah, but guys are getting their ankles broken and we see it. And it's not that hard. It's not as vague and it's not as hard to spot as that rule against lowering the helmet, making forcible contact with an opponent. That's true. This is easier to see. It's not as easy as the horse collar tackle because that's, so clear and so obvious when it happens. And a lot of these with the hip drop miles happen in the tackle box. But what the NFL mm-hmm. wants, and Troy Vincent explained this yesterday, we wrote something about it, I think, within the past day or two. Even if it's not spotted in real time with a yellow flag thrown, they want to be able to go back and find players. That's how you correct behavior. You are being fined because we're looking at the film after the fact and we're seeing that you did what you're not supposed to do. Grab, twist, fall. Grab, twist, fall, and land on the player's legs. That's the thing that 20 to 25 times, and there was an issue that came up yesterday during the conference call because a couple of times they said 20 to 25%, and they also said 20 to 25 times. That's a key difference. Their contention is it is 20 to 25 times times more likely to cause injury than normal play. Now, I don't know where they're getting that from. And, you know, we can come up with any numbers we want to support whatever it is we want to do. You don't need numbers for this. All you have to do is look at it. Once the Mm -hmm. light bulb goes off when you look at it, you recognize. And I hope that folks who are watching this on Peacock and seeing these clips understand how dangerous it is. Number one, you know it when you see it. And number two, when you see it, it is a dangerous play. I do love the you know it when you see it standard. Uh, shout out to the Supreme Court for that. Um, but yeah, I, I think Potter it's Stewart, one of those maybe. things. Potter Stewart. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but I, from the defensive perspective, right? Yes, it is one of the things that makes it m- more difficult to play defense. So that's why I get it from the defensive player. Because at a certain point, you know, say that you're trying to bring down Gronk. You know, it is a really big situation it's third and i don't know 13 right and he gets the ball where it would be fourth and seven and he's got to get these extra six yards okay and you are trying like hell to bring him down and you can't because he's gronk he is a superhuman it's like having the hulk out there like this makes it that much more difficult to bring somebody down because at a certain point like How the hell are you supposed to do it? I don't know. But that's why we evolve, right? We we have to change in different ways. And I I I I do I get it from that defensive perspective, but you know, you want your best players to be available. And so because of that, and because this is an offensive league, it's uh, unfortunately that's the way that it's got to be. It's going to be harder for defenses to make those kinds of plays. And I I get the frustration from a defender standpoint, but I also think that if they can do something, the NFL can do something to legislate something so that we can have fewer injuries on game day. I think it's a good idea. And this is one of the consequences of taking the head out of the game as players adjust how they tackle You know, it may be a byproduct of the rugby tackle that the Seahawks embraced when, you know, you go in like that, you go in with your shoulder, you go in with different angles, and somebody realized, hey, this is a way to get the guy to the ground. You know, once I'm grabbing this guy around the waist, his legs are still moving. How do I get him down? I'm just going to fall down and take him with me. And the NFL, it was explained yesterday during the conference call, they noticed this as they were looking at the causes of high ankle sprains. This was something the NFL noticed on its own. This was a, hey, look at this. Look, this is, hey, watch this. Like, more guys are starting to do this. And the NFL last year initially tried to get rid of it. I'm surprised they weren't successful last year. That's the only thing that gives me pause about getting enough votes this year. But I think now we all understand It is a serious injury risk. The numbers, even if they are being massaged a little bit, are indisputable. And it's one of those things where you know it when you see it. And, you know, the NFL typically is inclined to change the rules and adjust the rules and tweak the rules in a way that makes it more conducive to gaining yards and scoring points. It fits with everything the NFL has been doing since the mid-70s when they recognized 
more people are interested in our sport when more points are being scored, especially with the rise of fantasy football. And that's the last yes. thing I'll say on it, Miles. And I'll give you the final word after this. There's so many fans that are against this. I think the only way to get the fans to embrace it is to say, think about what this does to your fantasy teams. Think about what happens when you've got a team that's heading for a championship or you're going to avoid having to get a tattoo of some personal indignity on your arm if you're last in your league and you lose your best player because of a hip drop tackle. If you're not going to think about these players as humans who want to play football and need to avoid unnecessary risk of injury, think of them as extensions of your own self-interest and your own fantasy team. Your own fantasy team is potentially going to get messed up by a hip drop tackle. I wish people weren't like that, but I think you're right. You know, you, you have to, it's the only way to, it's the only way to get them to, to come around. It's the only way to get them to come I, around. I know. I, I, I know. And you know, when you're missing Justin Jefferson for, you know, half the season or whatever it was, because he's got a hamstring injury, like, he also he easily could have been the difference between sort of they like, or I mean, we can just play the Mark Andrews, right? He got hurt with a hip drop tackle. I'm sure that affected people's fantasy teams, but like, I don't know. I don't, I mean, I, my concern goes to Mark Andrews, the human being first. And I wish right. that that's I agree. who we could be as humans, you know, like these are human beings. They're not automatons. They're not just people that potentially get you money for or things that potentially get you money, you know, from your fantasy league. Think of people as human beings, right. guys, come on. I know. I agree with you completely, but that's where we are. I made this point yesterday because somebody who plays basketball made the comment, and I can't remember who it is because I don't know the modern basketball players because, as I said back in the early Get segment when I was tap dancing until we got you, and I, I, after Michael Jordan, I just kind of lost interest. But, but <laughs> this player said that he feels like a prop now. And that's, look, whether it's fantasy sports, whether it's prop bets on games, whether it's just straight old-fashioned betting a team to cover the spread or not. Athletes have become the dice on the craps table. They're the cards on the blackjack table. They're the little steel ball that's bouncing around the roulette wheel. That's what they are. They're the implements of gambling. So this makes them even more dehumanized. That's my big gripe, and it's always been my big visceral gripe with fantasy sports and all this. Number one, it bastardizes too, and i'm sorry I'll, I, I, i'm sorry uh, matthew barry and anybody else out there that's into it for me i just enjoy the sport for what it is i don't need all that other stuff especially because it warps and twists and changes what it's about it's not about how many targets this receiver gets or whether this person gets six catches it's about who wins the game you play to win the game you don't play to get keenan hello. allen more than six and a half catches in the game hello so this this explosion of legalized betting is only making the players less human in the eyes of the people who view them as the dice on the craps table. And that's why you all should be in favor of getting rid of the hip drop tackle, because if that's the way you think, then, you know, everybody's going to get more fantasy points and get you more money. And Hooray. that's, that's, that's my point. It's, it's yes. the only way to bust through that, Oh, well, just let's just play flag football. It's all be, it's, it's so every time I'm going to write something later today. Cause Peter King called me yesterday. Cause now that Peter King's retired, I hear from Peter more than I ever have in my life. And it's great. <laughs> That's the one incident. Although I did say earlier, I'd rather have enemies than friends. I have a friend now in Peter, like I <laughs> text and he'll call. And we were talking yesterday about the effort to protect defenseless receivers against helmet-to-helmet -helmet hits and the whole James Harrison thing with Muhammad Massaqua from 2010, and there were three of those I remember big that. hits in like five minutes of real time. And, and Peter wrote a long article about it, and there was strong resistance then by the NFLPA and by certain players to disciplining James Harrison. So this is the way it always goes, and it's a combination of players and fans coming together to resist an effort by the league. And we give the league a hard time when deserved for not truly caring about health and safety of players. But then we have these specific instances where the league is trying to promote health and safety of players and the players and the fans coming together in this unholy alliance because the fans don't care about the players as humans, but they come together to say, just make it flag football.
why do you want to do this? Why do you want to change the game? It really is amazing when you see it happen, but it happens. And this is why the NFL is just kind of shrugging at the NFLPA's resistance because they've seen it before. They've seen this movie. They're going to ignore the, the pushback and they're going to go do their thing. Yes, they are. And they should. It is funny. I mean, you know, a lot of times fans don't side with players, right? When we think about contracts and all that, well, why do the players want more money? Yeah, I could never earn that much money in my life. It's like, well, you know, they are trying to get value commiserate with what it is that they bring to the table, right? And so they side with the owners on that, but then they're not going to do that with this because it might make the sport a little bit less violent. I, I don't know. Maybe we should think a little bit more about that. And, uh, and we shall, and we'll be talking about it next week, especially if the ban on the hip drop tackle passes or if it doesn't. The one thing we didn't talk about, the kickoff rule, let me just say this very briefly. I think this proposed for the kickoff change. Number one, it is revolutionary. And number two, there's too much there, I think, for the owners to get to 24 this week. I think this gets mm -hmm. kicked to May. I think they talk through the issues they tweak some of the things like penalty enforcement. I know that's still an open issue. I just think there's too much. It's too big of a challenge for the annual meetings in March. This is more of a let's get together and have a good time. Let's kind of relax. When we get to May, the season is closer. And we've seen this before. Different rules get kicked to May when it's easier to just roll up your sleeves and work. And I think that's what they'll do. They'll identify the issues that need to be worked on the next two months. They'll get back together in May and they'll adopt a new kickoff then based upon this hybrid approach where it's like electric football, where they're all just kind of there waiting in their electric football poses for the kick to be caught by the return specialist, and then everybody takes off. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.